First, you were our blessings. Then, you became our family's blessings. We didn't know what this journey would look like, but from day one, we counted down the days. I didn't even know that I was counting down the days to experience the greatest pain of my life. So many things that I didn't know until I got to bring my trophies home. Home got a new meaning now. To you, it's when we wrap our arms around you. To us, it's you. Twenty two. The year that would change everything for me. The year I would become a mom. Ken really did his best to make it a very relaxing day for me and still a fun day, but a very pregnancy friendly. I went to my favorite place in the whole wide world, which is the beach. We sat there for hours. We were eating. We actually ate throughout the whole day. We went to a museum. It was the most chilled birthday I had ever had. And still I enjoyed it so much. When I had my birthday, I decided to go on a trip with my girls to Amsterdam. Um, that trip was interesting. No, 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 some medicine and just come with us. And like, she was like, no, and I'm scared of COVID and all of that. And we were like, bruh, I'm pregnant. I'm not even scared of COVID. Just come with us. Okay, so she went with us. And there in Amsterdam, like, we were talking about COVID a lot. <laughs> There is no social distancing. Zelfs met de politie die er staat. Ah, I remember laying down next to my friends in the evening and my friend was coughing a lot and we were like oh my god that is so covid <laughs> yeah a little problem please <laughs> tous 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 I would be scared of that. Some people would be scared. Yeah, Some people bang. would be scared. That corona because que le docteur te ventilateur. Ah tu peux choisir entre les bigger que tu veux, OK? Mm -hmm. Hamburger. Ouais. Alors, t'as un bagel, un burger, des tacos et des macarons ou bien... Ouais. T'es sûr que tu s'intégrais Je pense que t'es Et moi, genre, moi, genre un brunch avec des crêpes, tu vois, genre... Ah, mais j'avais envoyé bacon, des trucs. Ça... Comment vous toussez, toussez comme ça, là C'est l'angine. En plus, avec que bu du froid, genre. Les liens, là, que j'avais envoyés. Mais mmh. est-ce que c'est comme ça qu'on Mais, mais est-ce que c'est comme ça qu'on fait une déjà Regarde, regarde son vlog. <rire> <rire> un vlog vraiment. We went back home. And that evening, I got so ill. And I just knew that I had COVID. I went to the doctor the next day. And they diagnosed me with COVID. I was like, you knew that this could happen. And still, you went out there. I had chills over my whole body. I wasn't feeling well. Plus, the fact that I was vomiting every day. I had to stay in the hospital, of course, because, yeah, I was losing a lot of weight. I lost like 10 kilos in three days. So it was very serious and they were taking like all the precautions. So I had to stay there. I hated every minute of it. 
My time in the hospital was a nightmare. I couldn't have visitors. The vomiting got so bad that I got dehydrated. And on top of COVID, I got diagnosed with hyperemesis gravidarum. Now, what is hyperemesis gravidarum? Hyperemesis gravidarum is a medical term for severe nausea and a vomiting during pregnancy. You might vomit more than four times a day. You can also become dehydrated, feel constantly dizzy and lightheaded and lose 10 pounds or more. People that are carrying twins are more likely to get this because of the fast rising of hormones. In the hospital, I was only allowed to eat crackers because when you're battling this, it's highly advised to eat dry foods. You guys can't even imagine how hungry I was. Then when I went home, um, it took me like two months, I think, to really feel better from that COVID. Kid and I were quarantining together. Even if the vomiting didn't stop and that we didn't even have any taste or any smell, we really made the best out of it. Well, after that COVID thing, I really learned my lesson and I started to be very careful with everything. Uh, then the day arrives that we were going to hear about the genders. Um, I was a little bit excited because I just knew that I would get my confirmation and this is how it went. Ja, sicher mal. Ja, ich denke, dass die Mädchen, die Anfang die Jungen, die die Jungen, 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 die Jongen. Ja. Ah. Is het sowieso jongen? Ja. Oh my god. Dat is een super. Ja. Lekker? Ja. Dus vandaag um, hebben we weer een uh, gynaecoloogafspraak. We zijn in de vierde maand en ik heb uh, eerst Suzanne bij mij. En Kenny. Oh. Dus um, ja, ik ben heel benieuwd. Um, ja, ik neem jullie gewoon even mee en dan gaan we zien hoe het is met de baby's. The thing that I hated about COVID and being pregnant was the fact that I could only bring one person. The problem was that if I didn't bring Kin and I wanted to bring like my sister-in-law or someone else, um, he wouldn't see the twins for another month. The day that he went with us, we had to stay outside. But my sister-in-law was so happy to come and see the twins. She's also like the godmother of one of the twins. She was always so excited to uh, come with us. <laughs> One of the conditions of a vaginal childbirth with twins is that the lowest baby has to be bigger or heavier than the second baby and that the first one definitely has to have his head down. We were very lucky because from early on Noah was with his head down and throughout the whole pregnancy he didn't change positions. After the fourth month, I was slowly starting to feel better. Uh, the vomiting was only like once a day or maybe twice a day, but it wasn't like all day. I had actually a week where I didn't feel anything. I wasn't sick. I was just okay. I was fine. I really thought it was something wrong because I didn't feel sick at all. It was so weird. And um, after that week, I started to notice that every time that I was getting up and started to walk or even just turn around in bed or just small things, they were getting more painful and more painful. 
at first I was like okay maybe it's just like the weight that I'm carrying I'm carrying twins I thought maybe it was just a part of pregnancy after a while it was getting worse and worse and I even started to like feel my bones moving around I called my gynecologist and I told her all of the symptoms that I had and she was like I think you have pelvic instability and um, you should go see a physiotherapist and um, we, we are going to see how it's going to proceed from there for the ones that don't know what pelvic instability is, on the left we have a picture on how the pelvis should look and on the right you can clearly see that there is an abnormal gap between the two bones and that the bones are actually detached. I still suffer from pelvic instability till this day. You can often hear my bones click when I move around. The thing with pelvic instability is that when you sit down it hurts when you lay down it hurts when you're walking it hurts i was like okay i am in my fourth month i have pelvic instability small daily things they really got so hard for me like just getting up um putting some pants on walking like for a very long time and just laying down or just rolling over in bed was so so hard for me and so painful one day i was working because at that time i was working from home so it's on the laptop all day and i was working and suddenly i couldn't move anymore i tried to get up and i couldn't move and i couldn't even get my phone to call anybody to come to help me so i literally had to mail my boss that he could mail kin that was also working so that he could come back home to get me because i couldn't move and that was frightening when he arrived um it took me i think like an hour or maybe two to just get up i was screaming i was crying I was in so much pain. That was the first time that I was really confronted with the pain of pelvic instability. Went to the hospital and unfortunately they couldn't really do anything for me. I started with the physiotherapist. I had to go there I think twice a week. And to be honest, it didn't help at all. The weeks were passing by. I couldn't really walk anymore, couldn't do anything without assistance. That whole experience for me, the pelvic instability, was one of the worst things about pregnancy. The thought of not getting up or not uh, being able to be independent is just very frustrating. I was only four months and I just knew that I had such a long way to go. I think that I was crying almost every day till the day that the twins arrived. Ken is a soccer trainer in Bruges and for the ones that know where I live, y'all know that that is very far away. So often I had to go with him because he was scared to leave me in that state. Good day. Maybe being pregnant isn't that bad at all. <laughs> Yay! Uh, het is echt super hard aan het regenen. Ik ga nu mijn smaltebollen eten. These are so so good. Maar ik weet sowieso dat ik er al vol ga hangen. Ik kan dit echt elke dag eten. Mm. Dat is gewoon bof. Don't talk like this about my smart bowl. Uh. Hallo. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Sound 
that 20 weeks is actually like the most important one they really check everything like the hearts just the organs in general and every little thing they just check and double check so that ultrasound was very important for us but just to come every month and to hear that everything is going perfect and that the twins are growing well and everything is going fine was such a relief um even though i wasn't really scared of something and i also was feeling them moving around like very early on um so i wasn't really stressed about that but just to have that confirmation was just very nice at 19 weeks we decided to reveal the genders to our loved ones uh, my girls Grace and mariela were a very big help we were surrounded by our friends and family and that day was like the most perfect day. It's only after the gender reveal that we started to really shop for the babies and as everything was closed here in Belgium because of the lockdown, we always had to go to the Netherlands to do our shopping. I couldn't really walk for a long time because of the pelvic instability and I also got tired very very fast. At 23 weeks I started to have more and more pain so I had more ultrasounds. That is also the week that my contractions started so I was getting checked up very regularly so they could check everything again and again and that was the only thing that could comfort me at that time. I continued to go to the physiotherapist even if it really didn't help. <laughs> At 24 weeks they gave me a substance to drink and afterwards I had to do some blood tests. This was actually to detect if I had pregnancy diabetes, yes or no. But luckily for me, everything seemed fine. After all the blood tests, I had to do another ultrasound. I think no one wants their baby to arrive at 24 weeks, so they really had to check me again and again. Because of the contractions, they had to verify if it affected my pelvis and if it affected the twins. More like the only thing that I really liked about my pregnancy was um, just preparing everything, dreaming about them, thinking about them, like what would they look like? What would they smell like? Like, how are they going to be? Like, I was thinking about them 24 seven. I was looking at my calendar, I think like a million times a day. Like the only thing that really like kept me sane was the thought of bringing my two babies into the world. A lot of family was always around <laughs> to help <laughs> us. That's echt heel Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Tia to be. <laughs> Some new baby stuff. Got the baby bath. 
Look how cute. So that's it. So cute. <laughs> <laughs> We're having kids! Oh my god, this is so cute, guys. <laughs> you did a great job, Auntie Kiki. You little belly chick. Today she is doing the beds. She's almost finished with the first one. As you can see, she's really busy. I was clearly there for the mental support. Hi guys, so I'm here with Avenger. He's almost. <laughs> Echt? Wat moet je doen? Hmm. Ik ga het Ik het Ik het Ik het Bon les gars, euh, je vous montre ce que j'ai monté, je suis trop fière de moi. Genre pour une fois que je monte quelque chose, donc là j'ai monté cette armoire. Why is she lying? <rire> j'ai monté tout ça, il y a un deuxième qui est juste là derrière, mais euh, vous allez me voir travailler dans pas très longtemps. Cap. It's not a cat, cap. It's cap. C'est un petit liar, donc on ne sait pas plus. Et moi, comment tu as dit que tu <laughs> What's good? What's popping? Come on, let me show you. No. But you're actually in the middle of the place. You're so good. You're so good. Je ne sais même pas si tu es en train de faire ça. Mais ça, c'est ce que tu as dit. Tu as dit que 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 tu Allez, deux tasses suivent. We love men that work. Bye. <laughs> My brother has arrived. Kenny is still doing this thing right here. And my brother is fixing some things over there. It's really coming together. I'm so happy. <laughs> um, while I was pregnant, you guys saw me here and there on Instagram. I was trying to really keep it private. I was thinking about 
the fact that I was having twins, my first pregnancy. I really wanted to keep that private and just share this with my family and friends. I didn't really want to share it on socials because I just didn't feel comfortable enough to do that. That information came in the hands of people that shouldn't have known this. I don't know, they were just sending me messages like all day about the pregnancy and how I should reveal it and under my pictures they were commenting like yeah you're pregnant and congratulations. For example this message it comes from a guy that knows skin but doesn't know me personally and sends me this on ask why would you congratulate someone on ask knowing that that person hasn't announced their pregnancy yet. He knows that I'm not going to answer his question. He just wants me to know that he knows. And mind you, all of these messages were coming from people that we actually knew. I really felt pressured to do the announcement, but I didn't want to do it. In December, we decided to do it because I didn't want to deal with the stress anymore. I was very sad about that because I just didn't understand why people would do that. Like, why would you say such things or why would you um, pressure someone else to announce something that they really don't want to announce? And we're talking about a pregnancy. We're not talking about like an engagement or anything else. Like, it's so fragile and I just don't, I just really don't get it. But you know how the internet goes. That weekend, we organized a pregnancy shooting to reveal it. The next day we have announced our pregnancy on socials. This is the result of that shooting. So um, we announced it and the day that I announced it, I started to have very, very bad contractions. Next time on Road to Motherhood. Donc là, nous sommes dans la salle d'accouchement.